Hello Dark Predator here. First I'll be showing the possible cryptid and then I will be relating it to the missing 411 the Predator case and perhaps, if not probably, uh, the links are definitely there as you will see at the ending. I will propose that this is the creature that the woman in the documentary actually talks about and that it was caught on camera by this other person not all too far away from that area. Remember to like and subscribe, it will help to get these uh, videos uh, to a wider audience, I guess. Anyways, uh, enjoy the ride. Do you see that? Do you see that? I'm afraid... Damn. Look at his arms, boy. He not letting shit in the paint if he at center. He blocking all that shit with those arms. Did you see that? And it was shot by a man who was in Silver Point, Tennessee, just near the Edgar Evans State Park area. Now, what's interesting about this is take a look at the arm length. This is very inhuman and much more... I told you, arm length. Some people argue that this could very well be a guy in a suit using arm extensions, or it could be an escaped grade ape. Either way, this is a pretty compelling piece of footage. The last case I want to investigate is even a little deeper down the rabbit hole. It's not about a missing hunter, but instead about a strange experience one hunter faced in Lima, Ohio. It's important to note that this isn't a connection to the missing. It's simply an odd event that's worth looking into. And it's associated with one of the smartest people I've ever met. There's a difference, I guess, between being freaked out by things that you imagine and being freaked out by things that you actually see. This, I have to say, was the most terrifying experience, but yeah, I don't know why I didn't react to it, and that bothers me. The honey in Ohio is awesome. We have some great big trophy deer in Ohio, and we happen to have some of the biggest right here on our own property. the most beautiful night to deer hunt. It was the second day of season. I wanted to be getting my, you know, run in the woods to hunt. I was really excited about it. There was band over at the high school. By the time I got to my deer stand, I could hear them. Um, it was all settled in. Didn't see nothing coming down the pass. Trails, the birds, crickets, everything were normal wood sounds. When you're hunting, you have two of your most keenest senses, is your hearing and your eyesight. All of a sudden, the woods went to this dead quiet. If I had dropped a pin out of that deer stand, it cut off. No birds, no crickets, no nothing. The sun's still up. We were not calling for bad weather that night. It was a great night to hunt. All of a sudden, I thought I had like a moat in my eye. I even took my finger and wiped my eye, like when you get that fogginess over your eye, like it's just. I look and I'm thinking, what is this thing in the trees? It looked like a large piece of saran wrap. It's the only way I can describe it. But this thing was very wide. So I'm up 14 foot and it hung quite a ways down, and I'm thinking, what is this thing? It didn't really scare me at that time until it moved and formed the arm that reached over to the other tree. It reached over about 12 to 14 foot, and then it all, like a blob, like sucked into it, and it went the whole other tree. I had this very euphoric feeling, like something ain't right here, Normally at that time, I'd have probably got down and, and stopped hunting. 
but for some reason I didn't. So as you're sitting in your blind and you're looking across, where did the blob come from? I have no idea. It just appeared in the one tree. As it was moving through the woods, it went from like tree to tree and then it just, it disappeared. It didn't continue on. So where it went, I don't know. It's like it just right before my eyes vanished. And I don't remember taking the picture, but being married to who I'm married to, Dr. Bruce McAbee, he always said, if you see anything weird, get a picture. I don't recall actually when either that the sounds had returned. Cause it's like, I don't remember. That's not me to this day. Normally I would probably crawl down, come run in the house and say, you ain't gonna believe what's back there in them woods. How much longer do you think you stayed in the stand? Um, uh, had a half hour till sundown I, when it was time to come out. The sequence of this is Jan goes out to hunt. Uh, we have guests show up, we're having dinner. He comes back from the hunt. He says nothing about what happened, it was strange. The guests are about ready to leave later on. Matthew sends me an email. There was a sighting by a number of students and faculty at the high school band practice just before dark. I'm like, holy crap, maybe it has something to do with what I saw in the woods. I, and Bruce goes, what? And I said, I forgot to tell you about what happened in those woods to me tonight. And I'm reading this from Matthew and then I start really getting, I get goosebumps. He said, this light appeared above the big stadium lights of the football field. Had Matthew not sent that email, I'm not sure if I'd have remembered even that night to say anything. How many kids were on the field? Uh, at least 30, 30 to 40, I would say. And was that the high school band? Yes. And so this was just before you guys went back to school? Yes, band camp. Late August. Late August. So what time of night do you think that was? Uh, between six and seven. We were rehearsing normally out here about six, seven o'clock doing our normal um, routine, when all of a sudden there was this bright light in the sky that just came out of nowhere. And we all just kind of stopped and looked at it as one. Where was the light? So the light was anywhere, it was above the tree line for sure, just kind of hovering in the, the skyline. Close enough that it could catch your attention, like, like it shouldn't have been there, I guess. If it was some man-made thing, it was too low to be there. Okay. What was the weather like that night? Clear, like clear and hot. Typical August Ohio weather. Okay. What color was it? Candle orange. As far as I could tell, the thing had no definable edges to it. There were no like dimensions. It was just kind of waxing and waning till it just zapped out. You know, our band director, who never stops for anything, he stopped, he turned around and looked at us and he goes, you know, what the hell was that? Before I had time to even like think about what I was seeing, it was gone. And then it was just kind of like an imprint in your mind, like I've seen something strange. So in your gut, are the two issues related? I often wonder now. All I can say is it happened within the same time frame, basically, is my experience here, I a half a mile over there as the crow would fly. This is a blackberry. On the back, you have the uh, lens. It's not like the modern ones that have a camera on the front as well as a camera on the back. So I'd be taking your picture right now, but I would not be taking my picture. Something happened to that camera. I don't know what, but there's hard evidence of some weird thing that happened. She took a couple of pictures of herself before the event, which provide a, uh, a fixed point of investigation, you might say. And she took another picture afterwards so you have the camera phone doing its normal thing before and after, but right in the middle of this one photo, that something bizarre happened. The picture she took, the resolution somehow changed for that one picture. You could manually change the cell phone, 1600 by 1200, 1024 by 760 or something like that, and 640 by 480 but it got changed to 500 by 400 or something. Numbers that don't exist. I don't know how to make it do that resolution. 
you'd have to get in there and rewire it somehow or change the software but even changing the software doesn't change the number of pixels along the edge of the sensor I don't know how to explain this filamentary stuff I can't imagine what this what it looks like is well focused I don't know what that is I've had people write to me and say well what that is is Jan took a picture of her own hair my hair was back through the back of the ball cap where it adjusts it was tied back so there was no part of you that could have been in that no frame. way no way it'll be possible for her to take a picture of her hair if she put her hand back there but that wouldn't change the resolution of the camera or the bite size of the picture so Jan let me ask you since that has happened has it changed your life yeah, I've never been back in that woods to hunt that. I actually ended up buying a redneck deer blind. I mean, I want something surrounding me. You can imagine if you saw in the woods some strange thing like that, like the predator, you'd probably be leery about going back there again, too. Do you see that? Do you see that? I'm afraid... To Damn. Look at his arms, boy. I look at him thinking, what is this thing in the trees? It looked like a large until it moved and formed the arm that reached over to the other tree. It reached over about 12 to 14 foot and then it all like a blob like sucked into it. And it was shot by a man who was in Silver Point, Tennessee, just near the Edgar Evans State Park area. Now, what's interesting about this is take a look at the arm length. This is very inhuman and much more... I told you, arm length. Proportions. Some people argue that this could very well be a guy in a suit using arm extensions, or it could be an escaped grade ape. Either way, this is a pretty compelling piece of... All right, following the locations I sent in the videos is uh, the woman encountered that predator creature somewhere in Lima, Ohio. So that's basically here on the map. And then the video made by the guy showing the shadow creature was somewhere in Edgar Evans State Park. So this one is over here. And it's actually not that far from Ohio, so definitely a match or a connection that you can see here between these two points. It's not a lot of uh, space considering everything else. So pretty, uh, you know, pretty much a hit in my opinion. As it could probably be that creature that that guy actually filmed. And how crazy would it be that it actually also could uh, basically cloak and alter the camera's ability for quality so i'm actually saying perhaps the quality that we see from the guy in edgar evan state park is perhaps also of a low quality because of the same reason that the photograph was of a lower resolution in ohio that some force tempered with the technology in a fashion that we currently don't really understand another point to notice is the woman in ohio she actually says that uh, Everything went silent in the forest, which is uh, pretty creepy. It went dead silent, and she also didn't remember taking the photograph. So that's something uh, pretty bizarre as well, I would definitely say. And as for the Shawnee High School locations, well, there were a few of them in the same locations all around here. And these, I think all of them have a football field, so I couldn't really pinpoint that one out exactly. Though I could if I put in more effort, but anyways, uh, so you can see that's definitely very close to this region where that cryptid was encountered, which is very interesting, uh, definitely. Uh, check out the other video for Missing 411, where the so-called night crawlers were spotted near Yosemite Park, which is very interesting considering the paranormal events that those people uh, lived through in those regions. And that being said, like and subscribe because I've got another video coming concerning Missing 411, the UFO Connection documentary. There is a single case in it that I found some subliminal meanings to that were quite of a huge revelation. And uh, I have no idea what it means or where it goes to, but it is just something that's just uh, mind-blowing. 
and that will connect to the other video series that I'm making with secret societies, the number 33, 666 and other crazy stuff related in a way that uh, I think nobody has ever seen before. The numerics are there and yes, I'm well aware that this stuff comes from the internet, but I'm going to be releasing those videos uh, pretty soon, all in due time. Anyway, so thanks for watching and have a great time out there in reality. And just for reference, this is a gibbon monkey. I think this is one with the longest arms. You know, with the stance like that, you can vaguely see some of that posturing, but the behavior and everything else of the build is far less in a human fashion. So there are definitely some differences. But I chose this video because of, you know, the black fur, which uh, looked more similar to the paranormal documentation in uh, Edgar Evans State Park. But anyways, uh, it's up for you to decide as well, of course. All right, so following that, we have the woman's encounter with the invisible...